Okay, class. I wanted to uh, go into uh, kind of a unique way that I approach uh, doing things where I have a lot of things, uh, repetition of things. In our particular case, uh, one of our one of the things we're doing environments. A lot of times you have bookcases, and I will show you a way that uh, I deal with doing books. Okay, well, there will be all our bookcases. So. First thing we want to do is to uh, come in here and uh, create a box. Okay. So we're just going to um, create a box so that um, we're going to use it as the basis to our book. Now, you know, this is going to, this is not uh, where I want to be in a situation where I'm doing uh, books that I'm going to be up close on. Okay, or books laying out on a table. These are just uh, books that were going to be on a bookcase. Okay, so we're initially starting out just with you know a uh, rectangle, and let's go ahead and uh, make us a shader uh, for this. Okay, so we're always you know we're going to be using mental ray, so we do arch and design shader, and this is going to be the shader I'm going to use for the pages. Now, uh, initially I'm going to put this over the whole thing, but eventually this will just be for the book pages. So we'll go ahead and assign that to it, and uh, we don't want our pages really glossy. As a matter of fact, we don't really need to calculate reflection at all on our pages because we won't see them very much. Uh, so I'm just going to go highlights with FG only, which means it calculates, uh, instead of calculating this as a reflection, it just cal calculates it as a highlight on the surface. Okay. So we don't want it too shiny. So we're going to go uh, take it down to maybe point, uh, so like point three on its glossiness and maybe oh, point, uh, two on our reflectivity. And so it will get a little bit of a highlight on it, but it won't be too much. And uh, that'll work pretty good for that. Okay, let's go ahead and get this the correct size now. And so um, we're going to want it to be, oh, probably maybe we'll just start with one inch for its thickness of the book. Okay. And uh, let's say for the height, let's go for, oh, we'll say maybe 10 inches for the height of the book. And uh, let's go for, oh, maybe eight inches for the thickness of the book. And that's you know, perfectly that. And then let's go ahead and move it to the center of our world. So we'll zero all of these out. And there's our initial uh, book. Okay. All right. So we're going to call this uh, book cover because we're going to divide these, uh, the cover from the pages. So we're going to separate those out. So this will be the book cover. So, and I want to number these. So this is book cover uh, one. And so at that point, we'll just go ahead and convert it to an edible poly. And then I'm going to be able to come in here and grab um, these edges, which will be the pages of the book. And I'm just going to detach those. And we'll just call this uh, book pages. And this is one. Okay. So we want those as separate uh, entities, okay? And then what we're going to do is make us another shader here for the outside of the book, okay? So we're going to come in here, and this will be uh, book cover, book covers, okay? And we're just going to initially give this a color. Now, we're going to use bitmaps on it, but I just wanted a color so it's easy to see it in our viewport, okay? So we're going to give that... Uh, so saturated and we do want this one uh, reflective but we don't want it that reflective so we're gonna go with something maybe about uh, 0.5 on our glossiness and maybe uh, 0.4 on our reflectivity is fine let's kick up our glossy samples a little bit 16 so they're a little bit uh, better quality and then we're just going to put that on the book cover Okay, so this is on the book cover, and this is the book pages, and of course I can alter those at any given time. Now the other thing we're going to want to do is unwrap that book cover, because later we're going to want to uh, put a bitmap on it. So let's go ahead and put us an unwrap uh, UVW on top of that, and uh, let's just go in and 
we're going to do a default uh, it's just going to go to uh, we need to select it all and do an unfold is all we need to do and that will unfold that okay so that we have our back our spine and our front okay if you want to check your uh, settings you can go in here to the diffuse on here let's go ahead and just drop a checker on there so we can just check it to make sure they're square they will be because of the way I did it but we'll just go in here and check it because we're going to need this later anyway and uh, then we can see that we've got nice checkers on there okay at that point we want to just go ahead and collapse that in permanently make that part of it okay and so now we've got mapping coordinates that we can come back and we're gonna wrap a book cover on there and then we got pages we don't really need to put a bitmap on that because they'll just be uh, an off white and that's fine okay the next thing we want to do is to group these together so we want to select both of these and group those now I group instead of attaching so I don't have to deal with multi sub object materials which just increases your workflow so we're just going to group these so we'll go up here to group and this is going to be uh, book group one okay so it's book group one book cover one book pages one okay so one 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 Okay, now the other thing we want to do in here is we want to manipulate where we want the pivot point. It's going to default to put it in the center, and that's really not where we want it. We want it down in the corner. So we're going to go to the front, and we're going to pull this down. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. We just need it approximately right here in this corner. Okay, I can snap it, but it doesn't have to be that perfect. And then we're going to move it in the top to the front of it, too. Now, the reason we're doing this is we're going to be making copies of this, and we want to be scaling it, and we want to scale from that corner, okay? So, here we go. Now, we're going to make some copies of this. So, I'm going to hold down my shift key, and I'm going to pull it to pull it over. I'm constraining it, so I know it's moving right next to it as a copy, not a reference, and then it's going to be calling everything two, okay? So, now I can come in here and do a scale. Now, to do the scale... You, this will be off a little bit when you first do it. It's still going to come back here to the center. What you need this on, this setting right here is your coordinate system. You need it to be on local. And then this one out here, which is your uh, selection center, we need it to be the world, which is that down there. So now uh, when I scale, I can scale this and say, well, I want this book a little bit fatter. I want it to be shorter and I want it to be a little bit thinner. Now it's messing up the mapping curves. That's okay. We're going to fix those later. So there's our second book. Okay, let's do another one. Hold down the shift key and let's move it. Okay, this one, I'm going to make it a skinnier book. Okay, a little bit smaller book. Okay, so I'm going to move it over again. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to place these right up next to each other because books would have some gaps in them. Okay, we want it to have its own kind of unique irregular nature to it so we're just making uh, copies here matter of fact let's say this one is a little bit skinnier okay and let's just go for five first and so this is a taller book it's a tall kind of skinny book something like that okay so what we're just trying to do is a variety of different sizes for our books okay I think I'm going to take this one down a little bit like that. There we go. That's a nice look. Now we can come in from the front and we can just realign these a little bit so we can get a little bit tighter. Okay. Now the same thing. And I'm going to unplug my uh, plug my checker right here so I don't have to look at those interview for it, make it a little bit easier. And I don't want these to be spaced exactly the same. You know, I want there to be differences in this. Everything's irregular and give you a better look okay and then even from the top I'm gonna offset these a little bit so they're not all aligned okay and I don't need that realistic I'll turn that shade off I don't need that shadow in there okay so there we go okay so there's the basis of the first of our books okay now another thing I'm gonna do with this shader that I have in here is uh, I want this to have a rounded uh, cover on it, okay, a rounded edge to this. Now, it doesn't have a manufactured edge, 
so it's got uh, a sharp edge on it okay so what we're going to do is round that a little bit we're going to do it with our shader instead of having to come in and, and do it on the book so if you go to your uh, arch and design shader and we go down into our special effects there's a rounded corner right here we just click that on and now when we render this it's going to have a rounded edge and we're going to catch highlights down our edges okay it's going to make it seem a little more bookish now to me that's a little bit wide i'm going to tighten that up a little bit let's say maybe uh 18. let's do that point 18 and that looks a little bit better okay and then uh, maybe my uh, pages are a little gray. We may just lighten those up a little bit. I don't want them to be white, but we can lighten them a little bit. And there we go. That's a pretty good uh, start to our books. Now we're going to go in there. We're going to place bitmaps on everything. But right now, that's a pretty good start. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do right now is uh, we need to fix the mapping coordinates on it. Because when we look at the mapping coordinates, if we go back on to this and... Uh, Plug our checker back in and look at them. You'll see we got some stretching and stuff. So we want to fix these. So what I'm going to do is pick all of these right now and open the group. Now I'm not ungrouping them. And I see I see a lot of people doing that ungrouping. We don't ungroup. We open the group and then we can close the group. So we're opening it up. The pink is the group. So what I really want to do right now is I just want to actually pick the covers. So I want to pick the five covers. Okay, and when I have those picked, then I can come in here and with all those pick, I can put an unwrap UVW and it's putting all all of those at the same time. Now we've already baked one in, but what we're going to do is manipulate them some. So now when I go into the UV editor, all of these are laying right on top of each other. So I'm going to go poly, select them all, and then I'm going to go ahead and just pack these. Okay, so what it's going to do is... I don't like that. It, it took the stitching. I need to unfold those again. Pack them again. There we go. I don't know why I broke the spines off. I shouldn't have done that. But there we go. So there's the, the books right there. Now, you'll see they're all exactly the same. Okay. And let's go ahead and up our checker so we can see that pattern on there a little bit better. Oops, let's go for 40. Okay, so we can kind of see them on there a little bit better. Now, can you see how they're not checkers? I mean, they're not squares. Some, this first one will be squares, but the others are still messed up. What we want to do is to come in here with all of those select, and we want to go to tools, and you want to go to relax, and we want to relax by polygon angles and relax these. So the thing you're going to notice is that as I start to relax these, they should be changing shapes. So this fix this. OK, so it fixes all of these squares in here. OK, and you'll see that it's not. Now, the reason this is doing this is because one of the things that I've uh, talked about uh, and I've, I've got a pen on how to do this is that these transformations are screwed up any time that we use the scale tool. Okay, anytime we use the scale tool at the object level, then we are messing up the relationship between the object and the environment. Okay, so even though we've scaled these objects different sizes to the environment, they're still the original size. Okay, so we've got to fix the transformation on these objects before we can get the mapping coordinates to work correctly on those. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we can go in here right now and go ahead and collapse this in. Go ahead and co collapse these polys in there. And then what we're going to have to do is to go one by one, go in here and fix these. Okay, and here's how we're going to do that. We're going to pick one of the groups and we're going to isolate it. We need to do this uh, by itself. Okay. And... Um, One of the things about resetting a transformation is 
if I pick this book cover so that I can go in here and reset the transformation on it, when I go over to my hierarchy reset X form, it's going to be grayed out and it's because it's grouped. Okay. So what you have to do is go to group and just detach the cover momentarily. Okay. So now we pick it, we can say reset selected. And then you want to right click and convert it to an edible poly because what it's doing is placing an X form on your, uh, top of your stack and we just want to convert that into a poly okay now on your group we go attach and just attach, click back on it and now it's back part of that group again okay and so now let's hide that one uh, let's do this one and same thing here so we're going to pick the book cover we're going to just temporarily detach it, okay? All right, then you have to click off of it, click on it again, and then reset, convert to an edible poly, okay? We need to do that to each one of those, okay? I'm going to pause this while I do those real quick. Okay, so now that I've got all those X forms reset, okay, and then those put back into their groups, now when I come in here and I select all these and I go to tools, relax uh, by angles and I relax these, then you'll see that it's going to change all these settings in here. Okay. So now when I go in here and look at these, that you can see they've all got squares on them. Okay. Now they're different size squares, which is okay. But the main thing is that they're all squares again. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and set them again, and then I'm going to pack them again. And then what we're going to want to do is to come in here and just be scaling these so that we can get them all about to the same size. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way we go with these. So let's pick this one as our uh, standard. Okay, so that's going to be our standard, and then we'll pick each one of these to scale to that. So let's go scale here. And I'm going to scale that so that those squares are about the same. That's about right. They don't have to be perfect. But we want to give our resolution about the same on each one of these. So that's pretty close. Okay, those are all pretty close. Okay, so let's pack those. And there we have our initial pack. And so we have is our pixel density is about the same on every one of these. And uh, so we won't have some up stuff that's more pixelated than others. Okay, now we don't need to do this on the pages because we're just gonna leave a white shader on those. So the next thing we wanna do is just go in here and pack these uh, the best way, okay? So we got some dead space in here, so we just gotta figure out a way to better pack these. Uh, I'm going to initially just uh, move this one out of the way. I think I'm gonna rotate this one and slide it into there and maybe rotate this one slide it into there and maybe scale up from there okay so I'm gonna go there now when I use my scale by default it scales from the center and I really want to scale from this corner so if I go right here and pick this one they'll scale from that corner and that way I can scale those up okay that looks pretty good and then I want to use as much pixel density as I can. So I think I may do the same here. Scale these up. Whoops. Pick that again. Set that. That looks pretty good. And that's probably about as good a pixel density as I can get on these. Leave a little bit of space around them. Uh, maybe a little bit more. But that's pretty good right there. Okay. So that's a pretty good pack. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is render a template out of that, okay, that we're going to be taking to Photoshop to do our covers with, okay. So I do two templates, so I'm going to go to Tools, Render UV Template. We're going to leave these at 1024. We don't need these too high of a resolution uh, because they're going to be a bunch of books in the background. So if they were going to be up close, we might give it a higher resolution, but I think this will be okay. So I just want to uh, double check. So one of the things I'm going to do right here is I'm going to tell it to be solid and I'm going to turn off force two sided 
and then I'm going to render a template. Okay. Now, if one of these disappeared, it meant that it's facing the wrong way. The normals are facing the wrong way, but they're all uh, on there. Okay. And so uh, that's going to work just fine for us. Okay. So I'm going to normally, I want a wireframe. So, and I don't want the green, so I'm just going to render a template with wireframe like that. I'm going to save that out, and I'm just going to put this, so let's put it, uh, we'll go right there, okay. And this is a book template. This is just a garbage file, so I'm just going to leave this as a uh, JPEG. Uh, I don't really need this to be very big in quality because it's just a it's just a template. So we'll leave it as JPEG. That's fine. And then I'm going to do another one where I'm going to do a solid. I want to pick something that's kind of easy to pick. So this pink, something like that. We're going to say solid here. And I don't want edges. And we'll render that. And then we're going to save that out. And this is going to just call this uh, solid uh, JPEG. Okay, and so that'll give us our template. So I want to go ahead and just bake these in. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to poly. And then I can, uh, right now, let's just go ahead and close this group so I don't accidentally move anything around. Okay, so that's prepped pretty good. Now, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's another thing we'll do here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and get our textures. Let's go over and do some Photoshop stuff for a little bit, and then we'll come back. Okay, so Photoshop. Now, one of the things we're going to want to do is go over and get some book covers. So let's go over here to Google and let's go book covers. Okay, do a search for that. Now, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on really great covers or anything because there's going to be tons of books on these um, cabinets. Now, if this was an old ancient um Bookcases, I might want to do older kinds of books, but this is kind of just a normal everyday bookcase. And so we're going to do uh, just um, kind of uh, everyday books. Okay. Uh, I don't want, I normally want large textures, but since these are going to be uh, on the bookcase, we're just going to do medium texture so we can keep our rendering times down. So we just go through here and start picking some. I kind of like that one. I'll open that in a tab. This one's okay. We'll open that tab. So I'm just opening these in different tabs really quick, just going through here, getting some different ones, different looks. Okay, we want a variety in there. Okay, and what we're looking for is a book that has the front, the back, and the spine. We want all three of those, not just fronts. We want the entire unwrap. Okay. All right, then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy these and take them into Photoshop. Okay, so what we want to do is let's go ahead and prep our file. So we're going to go in here and uh, bring these two templates in. Okay, there's my wire template. And I'm just going to take my wire template and I'm going to bring it on and just drop it on top of here. Hold down the shift key so it goes right on top. Okay, and then I'm going to turn that on lighten so we just see the wireframe on top of it. Okay, there we go. And so it's going to uh, copy this image. Okay, then I can take it in here and just paste it. Okay, and um, you know, you could decide which book specifically need to be on, but I don't really care. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna drop it on this book. Now, normally I tell you to don't do non-proportional scaling, but for these books, I don't really care. Okay, you're not really gonna see them much. So something like that. Now, one of the things I do pay attention to is the spine. Okay, that spine is working okay, but a lot of times the spines may need to be manipulated a little bit. So let's go in here and get this one. Okay, so let's copy this. We'll paste this in here. And I'll put it on this book up here. Drop it in there. Uh, now, can you see that the, how wide this spine is supposed to be on there and that it's stretching it tight? This is where I would come in and manipulate this. Okay, so what I would do is to come in and actually grab the spine right there. The spine, I'm sorry, the spine, spine. 
and I'm going to copy that and put it on another layer on top of it, okay? Then I'm going to go in and get the cover of this book, the cover, okay? And I'm back down on that layer, control T, and now I can pull that cover so it goes all the way over the spine. Now, if it overlaps a little bit, that's fine. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to come in and get this, which is the back, control T, and then we're just going to pull that so it overlaps. That's fine. Hit that, deselect. And now I'm going to turn this spine on. And then I'm going to grab it, control T. And then I'm going to slide it in. Okay, and so there that spine matches up now. So you kind of want the spines to match up. Okay, so they'll be a little distorted when you first do it, but that's okay. You know, um, we're not going to see a lot of these. It's going to be in the background. Okay, so I'm going to pause this right now while I drop these other ones in. Okay, so here it is once I've got these uh, set up. So there's our five books. Now, while I was doing it, I went ahead and did another five books here. So I've got ten, okay? And you can use this template over and over again for however many different variations that you want to do. And uh, so I did two for the demonstration, okay? Now, I always save these as TIFF files that are layered files. You can save them as Photoshop files. That's okay, too. I use TIFFs. TIFFs are layered files. They understand everything just like Photoshop, so it'll keep all my layers. And then I save them out as Targa files as a flat file to be actually be textured. You don't want to use layered files like Photoshop files or TIFF files as textures. It makes it take longer to render. We only want to use something that's flattened like a Targa file. We'd never want to use a JPEG. Those are garbage files. They give you garbage renders. Um, so, target files. So, I save these out as 24 bit target files. There's no reason to save as 32 bit because we don't need transparency. So, we save these out as uh, 24 bit target files. Okay. So, now we're going to take them over into Max. Okay. So, uh, in our material editor, we've already got our shaders set up. So, I'm just going to come in here and drag in uh, our first uh, bitmap that we created. Okay. So, I'm going to label this. This is uh, book covers one so the first set and we'll just unplug our diffuse off of this this checker we don't need that anymore and we'll drop it in here and then we'll turn it on so we can see in our viewport and then there we go there's our books on there okay now one of the things you want to check is to make sure that they're right side up because some of them I turn sideways so I'm going to take this one right here and I'm going to isolate this and you'll see that this book is upside down Okay, so when I initially laid it out, it was upside down. I didn't notice that. So all I got to do is go back over here. Uh, that's this piece right here. So control T on that. And then I'm going to rotate it uh, 180 degrees. Okay, then I'll save that back out. Save as and that'll go back as my uh, target file. I'm just going to overwrite the same file. That was book one. 24 bit. And then uh, when we refresh in here, there it goes. Okay, so end isolation, that book is right side up. So you want to make sure they're all right side up. This one's upside down too. I'd need to go in there and flip that. Okay, so there's your first set. Okay, so we can kind of render that and see what they're going to look like. So there we go. Got our covers on there. So now we're being able to get uh, a group in here. Okay, that works pretty good. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is to show you how to, to do another little thing. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to uh, group these. And this is my um, book group one. Okay, and I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to hold on shift and then I'm just going to pull these over. And now I'm going to have another set of these. Okay. Okay, now uh, I'm going to just go ahead and scale these uh, just a little bit, not a lot, so that I don't have to redo the mapping on those, but just so that there's a little variation in them. Okay, now I can op open up the group and I can realign um, the order that they're in. Okay, maybe to give us variation, we're going to do something like this. 
pull those back in. And then close the group. Slide those back in so it's not totally repetitious. Just scaled them a little bit, which, which won't make much different. Now, here's a real cool thing we're going to do. Let's just isolate these for a section. second. What we're going to do is we're going to open up this group. Okay, and then we're going to open up the group one more time. Now, don't ungroup, just open the groups. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab these covers. I'm going to do a cool little thing here. I'm going to put a material ID on this. I want to do them all at the same time so that whatever I set this ID, it goes on all of those, and I'm going to set the ID for two. Now, the reason I've set it for two is by default, it's one, which means our first ones were one. Now, what this is going to allow us to do is to control these separate from the other ones, which is pretty cool. So we're just going to go ahead and close our groups. We have to close that twice, close that down. So now what we're going to do is over here um, in our material editor, we're going to plug this one. And what we're going to do is go down here and get a mental ray node. Okay, if you slide down, it's this red one, multi-sub object. And we're going to plug this in. Now, this is a really cool little node. And what it allows us to do is to funnel textures based on an object ID or a material ID. And that's the key right here. We're going to use material IDs. Okay. So if we plug this into slot one, okay, and we can see it uh, there, okay, and let's unhide our other ones uh, in isolation so we can see them all in there, okay. So now I'm going to pull that second one I made in here, okay, and we're going to put that in ID two, okay. And what that means is, is that that material is going to, now it can only show one of these at a time, but if we render these, uh, let's see, if I, yeah, I was afraid I wasn't going to do that. We can only show one of these at a time, okay, but it's actually going to render both of them. Okay, I thought it would read that first one's number one, but it's not. So we're going to have to go back into that one. So we'll just do that real quick. Isolate this. Same thing. Open the group. Select these again. Open them. Pick your covers. Now we're putting this material on them all at the same time. So it's an instance, which means that when I uh, do one of these, it changes all of them at the same time. Okay, and then close that group again. Okay, then we'll end our isolation and render. And then you'll see it'll put the first bitmap on material one and the second set on material two. Now, the reason we do that is because that way, anytime we want to change the shader, like we want to make it a little more reflective, whatever, it'll do them all at one time. So I don't have to have dozens and dozens of shaders in here. Okay, I only need one shader. This will funnel it through. Okay, another thing you can do, which helps out too, let's take this one again, and we'll make a copy of this one. Okay, so now all I have to do is open this group, click on this one, open it. Now when I pick this, you get the material ID. All I have to do is change it on this one, because these are all instances, and it changes on all of those at the same time. So I'm just going to close that, close it again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this original node, okay, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get, on, let's go to our color map three slot here and open this up standard and get a color correction node. Okay, so now I can funnel this same texture into this one. But what I can do is go in here and do a hue shift, and I can change the colors of it based on this hue. So they're the same patterns on there, but they'll be a different color, okay? And so you can do variations. It's the same texture on here, but I'm doing variations by just tinting the color, and you can get more variations really quick, okay?
So this is a way that really quickly you can get a lot of different uh, variations without and being pretty efficient at what you're doing instead of having to create a custom thing for everything. Okay. Of course, we could do as many uh, different uh, bitmap nodes as we wanted to. And of course, we'll clone these. And then what you're doing is altering them just a little bit. You know, you can just come in here as long as you take in the group and you're only scaling them, you know, small amounts, then we won't notice the distortion of that. Okay. And that's how you can populate your bookshelves pretty quick with a minimal amount of stress um, using this nice multi sub object node instead of having to make you know multiple materials and put on things we only have one uh, material on it we're funneling this the key on this is remember by default it goes to object IDs that's a different way you do it but it's faster to do material IDs than every one of these slots when we put a material and we put three, four, five, or six, whatever we plug into there is what's going to show up in there. Okay. We can do the same on this one. You use it again, plug it in, do a color correction. Other things you do with color correction, it's not just, you know, change the hue. You can saturate them. There's a lot of things you can do with it to manipulate it so they don't look exactly the same. Okay. All right. So hopefully that'll help you understand a little bit more about using some advanced uh, shaders and a way to uh, streamline some of your workflow with your textures so that you don't have, you know, thousands of shaders in here, but you're able to stack them in a specific way using material IDs. Okay. Thank you very much.